मैं कही की कब ही ने अपेले मैं गाई नहीं पोला पोला मैं क पुनो लाखन मैं के उला लपे कलन मैं को पुला लपे कही की लपे कुई मैं कब ही ने अपेले अलावा वी ने लाखा को how you know is really nervous for a long time was nervous and it doesn't matter how much we speak we're still nervous before we get on and especially when you had all the great speakers uh before us oh, and cramming and cramming we're cramming out there <laughs> <laughs> and and as nale who said when he says that oh everybody already said everything good before him and he's absolutely correct everybody before us was absolutely wonderful it there is a light at the end of the tunnel and the light has grown larger and larger and larger we live we will always be we have been we are hawaii so proud of all of these people that came out to talk today to that particular subject um oh they changed the thing on me <laughs> and that's fine too um oh yeah the topic continuum of family hawaiian cultural transition tradition tradition yeah or oh, see <laughs> <laughs> change the font <laughs> <laughs> It's all right it look, looks lovely Bryson where you stay Bryson Okay but it does look lovely Um we were actually given the topic to talk about So unlike um Mr. Salah we didn't have a choice at this our choice uh they were, they asked if we would talk on how we do the continuum of family tradition generation to generation and so that's kind of our our talk today uh we don't really know how this is done we've never really intellectualized about it or articulated about it we just do it <laughs> from one generation to another we just do it and we take our children along with us when they're young they okay you go, you're going to do this <laughs> and they just do it Okay. <laughs> But since we're college graduates, <laughs> college educated, we take it as a challenge to articulate this particular topic. And so we're not going to really talk about how we do it because she's going to do a little bit because she thinks about it nowadays. But I did it. and uh we're not going to talk about so much about how we do it but why we do it and so the why has become a very important part of our teaching and learning um uh phenomena now and we've had generations of people doing the um the uh tradition that we have and so i think that we're very fortunate to have had that but at every level parents worry those that bear the tradition worry about children who go away and they've taught them you know all of their growing up years and then all of a sudden children go away and they think whether whether they give them enough so that it takes root and some day it will bloom and grow and and become um part of the the generation of making the tradition live all over again well i'm really way off topic okay <laughs> kekui and i uh you know i had this this topic to talk and was a b c d but kekui and i we have seven slides and i we're going to do every other slide and so i'm going to slam in two slide one slide you go slam in the next we're just slamming back and forth because we only have 15 minutes to talk and we're going to talk 2 minutes each on each slide. And I already talked for 10 minutes. <laughs> Doesn't count. <laughs> When I start talking about this, then it counts. Then you click the timer. 
<laughs> you know, I talked on another um, TEDx. Talked on another TEDx, and they have the big timer right in front of you. And the seconds are going tick, tick, tick. And as you're talking, you've got to just stay on it. No more, no more clock. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I wanted to talk about each uh, word in this particular phrase. Because the words in this phrase kind of lays out like a foundation as to why we do what we do. Okay? So if you look at continuum, continuum can be used as a noun. And continuum as a noun means time. Continuum as a noun also means foundation. Do you want me to get away from this? Okay. Continuum as, <laughs> continuum as a noun also means foundation. But it also helps, the word also helps you to develop a um, character when it is used as a verb. Because continuum as a verb means to persevere, to pursue, to endure, to constantly do. Okay. So if this is so, am I on or what? If this is... <laughs> So worried, nobody will hear me. <laughs> if this is so as a verb, then what it's doing, if there is that continuum that is taught, is that it teaches you how to have passion. And passion drives longevity. And that's what this is all about, longevity. Okay? And so there's one part of that web that's beginning to build. The other, and the, the idea of continu continuum is the what in, in how we do things. This is the what, what we do. The uh, family, the word family, has to do with who does it. A tradition really belongs to a family because the tradition has to do with the family that lived before you. They then become our aumakua. It is family driven. And then we then become the present day bearers of that tradition, and then we pass it on to those that, that uh, are going to be the recipients, so the vessels for, these, for this practice. Okay. So the family uh, uh, answers the question, who? Uh, the idea of Hawaiian is where. It tells you where this particular practice or continuum or tradition is taking place. And in this case, it's taking place in Hawaii. And it doesn't matter if it's Kyokaha Hawaii, uh, Kaumana Hawaii, Wailuku Hawaii, um, but it's taking place in Hawaii in a particular space. Very, very conscious about space. Somebody talked about space and time. We're very conscious about space and time when we pass on a tradition. And this doesn't become um, uh, consciously talked about till we get older, until our children are older. Then we talk about space and time. Okay, culture tells you what we're trying to, to preserve. Culture provides a development of protocol in that particular space. Protocol has to do with your treatment of other people, your treatment of the land, the land's treatment of other creatures, creatures, the treatment of between creatures, the, the treatment of the, the um, elements to the land or for the land, and then back to you. Okay. This is how we develop culture in a particular space. And then the last part of the, the web of uh, making a tradition is the word tradition itself. Tradition represents the activity. And the activity that is practiced within a particular space. But that activity is only dictated by a family who is practicing a tradition. And so that means that if you are another family and you are practicing another tradition or a similar kind of tradition 
each one of the families will practice it according to how it's been dictated to them in their space, in their time, in their family. Okay. And so that's what we understand about these words. And that's why I wanted to use all of these words, because it helps lays out the foundation of the um, passing on of tradition. Now, what do I? So the family tradition then we're talking about today is uh, hula, the ha'a. You're familiar with these words, yeah? Okay. Oli, ha'imu'olelo, and there's an interpretation of what those words mean, um, what those traditions mean. And this is all nicely packaged in people in a particular space. I would like to, um, I'm going to add on two words, okay, uh, to, to what I think are significant um, 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 aspects of our family tradition, and one of them is ritual, and the other one of them is um, haka ka'au. Well, it's not a word, it's a term, but the haka ka'au. Okay, so the ritual is ritual. Haka Ka'au is, um, how we're going to define that? I'm going to call it the portal. Yeah, that's a good one, the portal. One of the most significant and, and core aspects of the Hula Aiha'a tradition, that's what we are, is the, um, and the Ha'a is another word for Haka. Now you see how that plays in Haka mo'olelo, the ha'a ka'ao, the ha'a mo'olelo, and all that kind of thing. Okay, so I want to talk about the hula ai ha'a, and then I want to talk about how the hula ai ha'a, in every aspect of the practice, we, the practice is about sp spiritually connecting. Connecting to what? Connecting to the sky, connecting to the kupuna, connecting to the drapes, I don't know. Whatever it is for you. For us, the hula aiha'a is about spiritually connecting time and space. That's one of the, the core aspects of it. That's the one, that's what I think one of the core aspects are. Um, that's, it's, so mahalo for the, um, the mele about time and space. Um, the, the interesting thing about our practice is, um, is that every aspect of the hula ai ha'a, um, every aspect brings together a particular, creates a particular alchemy. And that alchemy is, affords us the ability to um, move into another space, into another time in our same general space. And this is the real fun of the dance right here. This is the real fun of it. Not just the dancing for the now, for the choreography. It's the dancing to enter the portal. Whoa. <laughs> OK, so let me tell you how it's done. Right, okay, so the recipe is, <laughs> first, you recognize your space. So we're talking about the Hawaii universe, the space of the Hawaii universe. And um, so for some of us, it's just here in front of us, and up, and it goes all the way, subterranean, and down to the core. Wherever Mo'olelo tell us the, the the, the Hawaii universe extends to, that's where it extends to. You just have to accept it. Okay. And so we start with the space. That's number one. It's like the flower for a cake. And with the clear guided direction of the kumuhula then, the hula practitioner, um, um, Oh, and then we take the, and, and then the hula practitioner takes the poetic text. Now, the poetic text is 
a nice uh, documentation. It's a nice reflection of the observations of, of kupuna in the same space, but at a different time. Okay, so you take the poetic text, and then you throw in some movement. Then you add the spices, the necessary spices, the kupe'e, the a'aho. That's the a'aho. That's what we wear on our body self. You know, the lipo has certain vegetation, speaks to particular energies you want to pull from the forest. Yeah? And some people wear shells for their kupe'e, speaks to particular energies you want to pull up from the ocean. And then all of those a'ahu, those necessary regalia, you know, ritual regalia, helps you to position yourself so that when we go to the next step, huh? Okay, I'm ending now. To so this. When we put all of those things together with the active, with the, um, okay, well, uh, with the input of energy from around us, we put all those things together with, with the kumuhula over there and the dancer over here and space as a continuum, um, what we start to have is this little, this little energy moving and beginning to open what we call the portal. And then the dancer steps in. And now I am a part of the story from a different time, same space, different time. And the ultimate magic of all of that, ha'a, hula, mo'olelo, haka, ritual, is that we have the ability and the honor to pull you in with us.